All right, what is up, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Rocket Vlogs. Today, I'm going to show you guys how exactly I set up my electronics bay for the 5-inch Punisher. It's flying this weekend at Cloudburst in Argonia, Kansas on an M4500, and we are flying the 12-inch Punisher once again. We got the Rocket Channel, Taylor sitting there off the camera that you can't see, and behind the camera is Postart from Postart Propulsion, who you also can't see. Yesterday, uh, Taylor very, or no, I guess it wasn't yesterday, a couple days ago, Taylor very generously donated to me some carbon fiber that he had kicking around. He is that rich. And, uh, <laughs> and I built myself a new electronics bay for this guy. And apparently didn't clean the nose cone good enough. We'll revisit that in a second. But uh, yeah, I'm going to show you guys how I set up my electronics bay, how to keep it unbelievably simple when you're flying dual deploy. And uh, yeah, let's do that. Clap. How was that? Did you line it up? Yep. All right, so. A lot of times I use wing nuts on these. Taylor doesn't like that. But he's watched me struggle with getting the V2 apart enough times that he should understand that it's perfectly fine. But on this particular <laughs> one, I did not use wing nuts. Or washers now. Washers. Washers. <laughs> That's it. That is legitimately my entire sled right there. And uh, I am going to show you, get, well, I have to set up the RSC2 a little bit differently because it doesn't have a switch terminal, which is what I'm about to do right now. And uh, then I'm going to put batteries in it, and I don't know if I want to make charges today. I also don't remember what size charges I do, but I just had this conversation with Andrew, so I'll be able to figure that out. You ask me every time. Because I don't ground test any of my rockets, I just use your data. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta move this out of the way. <laughs> On the rally car. My question, when I get the reaction I'm sure you're about to have when I put this together like this, is why, for those who twist and tape, is it fine for you to twist the wires outside of the rocket, but inside of the rocket it suddenly becomes scary? There's no reason to think this won't be fine. You know what's funny is my only Two ballistic flights didn't have an altimeter like this. They had dedicated switch terminals. Every time I've flown one of these, huh? You mean perfect flight? An RC3, an RC2 Mini. I wouldn't badmouth perfect flight except for the not being able to buy a stratologer thing. You should have a... yeah. Here's the next sketchy part that makes everybody question my sanity. But I would like everybody to know that Taylor and I, completely separate from each other, by th what, a thousand miles at least, uh, both make electronics based just like this. Taylor, how many dual deploy flights do you have? And how many of them have not worked because of altimeter failure? Zero. There you go. I like to call electrical tape mock tape now. What tape? Mock tape. Why? Because it's mock certified. I like to clean the wiring up a little bit, if I'm honest, and I'm going to, but Nothing crazy. Yeah, I always say there's no rocket too big for popsicle sticks. I guess the 12 inch is the ultimate representation of that. They're just good for everything. I guess I did have the parts needed. But still. Alright, ladies and gentlemen. That really is it. That's how all of my electronics bays are built. And that's how I've been flying electronics since I was like 15, 14, I don't know. Long time, and I've only had a couple electronics failures. None of them where charges didn't fire. I'm pretty confident the Apogee charge fired on my four inch, but it was flying very horizontal by the time it got Apogee. 
I'm pretty positive the first charge just didn't blow it apart. Um, but at any rate, got a lot more successes than we do failures flying this way. So it is what it is. I know a lot of people don't like nine volts anymore and are really scared of them and the whole capacitor firing the E-match thing, but works. So that's, uh, here we are. We'll have Taylor show you here in a second the electronics bay in the 12-inch Punisher because we got to put new batteries in it anyway. But uh, yeah, I'm actually probably going to, I don't know how well you can see that, those wires are sticking out of that terminal just a little bit. I'm going to trim those down a little bit more so I don't want them to short. But other than that, E-matches just go straight to the altimeters through the bulk plates, tape them down, try not to let black powder inside the electronics bay, and that's it. That's how you build a really simple electronics bay. You don't need that fancy terminal blocks in the bulk plates nonsense. All right, Taylor, time to pull back the curtain on the 12 inch Punisher's electronics. We never really covered it. See how good I am at eyeballing. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's a terrible sound. Oh no, the C9's down there too, huh? I guess we gotta take it out anyway. Try and get it. Ah! Ow. That's those guitar fingers, dude. <laughs> There's the brain of the 12-inch uh, Punisher. Two perfect light straddle-uggers and some electrical tape 9 volts. That's from your 3-inch Punisher, isn't it? Uh, well, this is the same. I made it when we built this, but it's the same sled I put in all my rockets. Very, very fitting. It's the exact same as any other so Punisher. I could put this in my 3-inch Punisher. Or yeah, well, I mean, Punisher, any same thing. thing. Not even just your Punishers, right? It's everything. Yeah, every, well, it's three inch or, any 3-inch or bigger rocket. So all uses the same sled. Yeah, there you go. Uh, the 12-inch Punisher has two altimeters with E-matches straight to the altimeters and some electrical tape and 9 volts. It works, people. Show, show how much room there is in here. Oh, yeah. We need camera equipment in here, dude. We got to step our game up on the next flight for the uh, recording. Although, the onboard is going to work this time. I swear by it. It has to. Hey, should we tell them that the Got Thrust AGG shirts are back right now? The Got Thrust? The God Thrust AGG shirts are back right now. You guys should uh, go check those out at rocketblogs.com. All right, so I flew this, this Stratologger on the V2, so I have to guess it's probably set for either 13 or 1100 feet. The RSC2 Plus is set for 800 with a one second delay on the drogue, so I'm just gonna make sure this is where I want it. I want it on preset five, so that's gonna be 1100 feet. So uh, the way you do this with a Stratologger, and it'll tell you what preset it's on. Oh no, you have to press it. And it should beep back at me five times. All right, ladies and gentlemen, nice short video for you, but there you go. That's how you make a real, real simple electronics bay that's functional and uh, doesn't have to be pretty to work beautifully you know what i mean it's carbon fiber though it looks pretty good thanks taylor but uh yeah so check out rocketvlogs.com we have merch available um i'll keep the got thrust shirts up again through the end of the month of course if you want to see behind the scenes pictures and stuff like that check out patreon.com rocketvlogs we have three days until the 12 inch punisher is leaving the ground on all seven motors and it is going to work so thank you guys so much for watching my name is brayden and I'll see you next time.